I'm Lou Collins and I want to take you through a journey exploring mixed media techniques. Today we're going to be using ink pads and a brayer to create this fantastic grungy background. It's really layered, really dimensional and really textured. It takes just minutes too. So I am going to help you by breaking down the hundreds of possible techniques out there and building an easy to follow, stress-free program of short and quick practical lessons. Together we will be creating a library of technique tags to keep and refer back to with a video tutorial for each and every one. So for tag number two and for the first few videos in this series we're going to be concentrating on our backgrounds. So I've got my second tag here and this one is a really really simple kind of distressed and grungy background that you can create if you've just got a few ink pads and a brayer. So this is one that is of course unpredictable as lots of mixed media is and I think that's where people get a little bit scared of it but hopefully trying things out on your tags. You may even have a notebook that you're trying these techniques out in instead of tags, whatever suits you but I'd love you to just try all of the techniques that I'm showing you so that you start to build up your confidence with them. So I'm going to take three colours. Now one is a much darker colour. I could have gone with a black um, but I chose to go with a really dark brown for this one. Now these are Distress Oxides, one of my favourite personal ink pads but you can use Distress inks. You could use absolutely any dye or pigment based ink that you want to. The only thing is you do need quite a large ink pad really if you're going to be using a brayer. So we'll use that one at the end but my two main colours are going to be these. So I've gone for a nice warm brown and a teal colour. So Peacock Feathers and Vintage Photo. Now again I'm working on watercolour paper. If you are just joining and this is the first time of watching there is a video one where I explain the tags that I've made, what I've made them from um, and why we're using them. You'll find that at the beginning of the playlist. Now I've got quite a small brayer here. You can get different size brayers so I also have some that are much larger but this one I find I can get a little more control, a little more detail in. I'm going to start with the brown and with the brayers very often you'll have these stands on them so you want to make sure that they are not facing downwards otherwise you're going to have trouble with them hitting the paper. So flip that over, make sure that these are facing upwards and I'm just going to roll in a few smooth motions over the entire pad just making sure that I get lots of ink over my brayer. Now you won't necessarily see the ink on the brayer very well. Make sure you have protected your surface if you're concerned about ink going on it and I'm just going to start adding some ink and reapplying to my brayer in different shapes and different directions but I'm not covering my entire tag here. There, so there's a few areas to start with. Now because I'm working on a watercolour paper I'm getting this sort of stippled and distressed effect and that's absolutely fine, I quite like that. So I'm just going to continue in a few more areas and you can go back and forth and press really hard if you want to, just a couple of places, like so. Then onto some kitchen towel, I'm just going to brush off any excess brown and wipe it from around the surface. With this particular ink it is water reactive so I'm going to use a touch of water on my surface just to clean it and then I'm going to come to my peacock feathers. Again I'm going to pick up my ink and again quite a lot of ink and I'm just going to lightly go from pressing down hard at the edge and lifting up and you can do that from the edge or you can do it from somewhere in the centre and you'll get this more solid line. So again pressing and releasing and you can do it just from the edge as well if you wish. So I've got lots of texture building up here. Now once again I'm going to clean my brayer. I wouldn't suggest using water on your brayer unless you can really really thoroughly dry it off. So when you're happy with the, sh the shapes and whereabouts your colours laying you can take your darker colour and I'm just this time I'm just going to really ink half of the brayer rather than all of it and I'm going to take this to just my edges and just brush in from the edges here this just gives me a little more control by only inking a small amount so some of these I'll brush in 
so you can see in from the edge and some of these I'll actually brush along the edge. I love the variation that we get of the dark and light. But I've just done that around the edge. Now, depending on the texture of your paper, you will get a different look from this. So I really like that. So that is a really textured finish there. It almost looks like fabric because of that sort of woven material, wo woven surface of the watercolour paper. If you're not keen on that look, though, what we can do next, and I'm going to do it just to be able to show you, is you can spritz lightly with some water. Now, this is only if the ink that you've chosen to use is water reactive. If not, you can leave it. There's a lot of texture there. There's a lot of grunge there. And I just think that's absolutely fantastic if that's the look you're going for. But as I say, if you want a slightly more delicate and softer look, then a spritz of water will help to just sort of blur everything a little. Now the great thing about doing this with the brayer first and then spritzing, you've got a lot of control over whereabouts your colour is going. You can really evenly add small areas and build it up until you're happy with the composition of your two different colours. So I'm just going to do a light mist over the top and instantly you can see those colours have become more vivid. And they've also just started to blur a little into the cracks and creases and the uh, te te sort of bumpy texture of the cardstock there. Now I've got some areas here that have got a lot of uh, water on them and you can really see that. And then I've got some areas that have not and you can still really see the texture and I like the variation so I'm going to leave it at this. Now as you can see here I'm just using my tweezers. The cardstock started to warp with the water on it and that's normal, that's completely natural, that happens. But if that happens, any water that's still sitting on the surface would start to run to the edges and then you'll get all of your colour pooling at the edges. We don't want that. We want this nice, even saturation across the whole piece. So I'm just taking something with a really tiny point. So I've got my tweezers, could be a pokey tool, and I'm just holding that down in the middle until all the water's soaked in. Now I'm going to take a heat tool and I am going to allow some warm air over the surface to dry this off a little bit faster. How beautiful is that background? It's so pretty. It's really great for grungy looks, for distressed looks. I absolutely love it. And how quick was it as well? Now, of course, if you prefer, you could have absolutely covered this with water. Again, just make sure that that warping doesn't cause the water to run off and drag the colour with it. Or you could have just completely left it very textured with more of the white showing through. But I really like this varied look. So there's a second technique for you to add to your mixed media technique arsenal. You can hopefully create your own tag and write on the back what you've done as well to remind yourself when you're looking in future. As usual, you'll find a playlist just here. This is going to take you to all of the videos in the mixed media and art journal 10 minute technique series. This is video number two, so make sure you haven't missed video number one and I will see you again very, very soon for video number three. Be sure if you're on Facebook to join our Facebook group, Mixed Media Technique Taggers. We can be found there, anyone can join and you can take part in sharing your tags that you've made using these techniques and of course ask any questions, but equally you can ask any questions in the comments below too.